the president of Bot Helicopter Incorporated, Joseph R. Silverman, thought it would be a nice idea if world champion cowboy Bob Hayes had a chance to look down on the turf he runs around on so well. So some very stylish transportation was provided. It's the Vought Gazelle helicopter. You can have one in your own garage for only $190,000. It took off from Texas Stadium's parking lot, and suddenly it was like wish fulfillment, zipping down the freeway at 150 miles per hour, although it can go to a record-breaking 194, was a fantastic way to avoid noontime traffic. Skipping quickly over downtown, we buzzed over Bob's old home, the Cotton Bowl, where, Bob says, the next Super Bowl should be played, and the AstroTurf is softer. We made a quick circle of Channel 8, and then on west to fly over the new regional airport like birds waiting for a nest to be built. Mr. Hayes, who may soon be an off-season player for Braniff Airlines Sales Department, pointed out Texas Stadium and seemed to enjoy the Coliseum from this unique angle. And from what I've heard about parking during a cowboy game here, I do believe this form of transportation just might catch on. For Channel 8 News in the Move, this is Judy Hanna. No, I don't. And this is one of the big pluses that I have, I, having been at Rice University for a whole year. and. Uh, I've had an opportunity to see uh, what resources we have and how they're being used. And Bryce has a tremendous amount of pluses. We, we're one of the top 10 academic institutions in the United States. We have alumni that, uh, uh, that came from the top 1% of the students in the United States. And there are some of them that are pretty, pretty successful in the position to help us, but they've never been asked. And that's what I'm setting about to do is to ask them to help us. And then. Uh, of course, Rice University is, uh, is set up to, uh, on a level where a boy can get an education. We have one professor for every nine students, and, and uh, this is something that is real important nowadays. Do you plan to continue to recruit heavily in the Dallas-Fort Worth area? We certainly will. And of course, my, my assistant, Bob DeCrosta, that was a you know, high school coach here, uh, and we'll have several other assistants that will be here in Dallas, and we'll, we'll comb it with a fine-tooth comb. Are you optimistic for the coming football season? Well, I thought, uh, you know, we, we scared some people last year. And you, if you take 19 points and, and you let me put them in the right places, we're right up on top. And uh, we're going to be better physically next year and more experienced and more accustomed to the, the system. So I'm optimistic. Well, Gary, uh, what we really plan to do is a very simple thing. We plan to go to businessmen in the community and ask them can chaperones appear at their businesses as a, well, just a personal appearance, give away chaperones, souvenirs, pictures, and things of this nature. We also plan for them to practice, uh, hold some of the chaperones' uh, practice, basketball practice in the black communities so the black kids can relate to the players and see them and talk to them. That's two of the things we plan to do. We also plan to have ticket stuff parties uh, at different clubs or things of this nature in the black community. Ben, can you give us a specific date so that the youngsters will know when they can go watch the Shafts work out of their area? Yes, Jerry, I can. Thursday, February the 3rd at Wahoo Park and Recreation Building. This is 4500 Spring Avenue. It will be at 4 p.m. The Shaft team will be out. They will conduct a workout players and coaches, and we'll have souvenirs there for the kids or other people. And it's open to the public. Everybody can come in, watch the shops play, talk to the players after practice. Governor Preston Smith told the Texas Commission on Alcoholism, meeting at the end of Six Flags today, that anti-alcoholism planning is to begin immediately among state agencies. The main thrust will be starting with an effort to fight alcoholism among state employees. The governor tells me that the program will receive top priority. From a social and an economic standpoint, this is one of the most serious problems we have to solve, and naturally it's in with the very top priorities. I would say then the first five or six. Keynote speaker at the conference today was Edward Sands, special assistant to the director of the National Institute on Alcoholism. 
is there an incidence of increasing alcoholism among the workforce? To answer you, I would say, put it this way, there may not be an increase in the incidence among the workforce, but we are perhaps better able to detect its existence in the workforce or in the population generally, that through awareness and recognition and acceptance, people in the healthcare system are able to identify better now than ever before. Alcoholism costs industry between eight and ten billion dollars a year in the United States. It directly or indirectly affects some two million Texans at an annual cost of over four hundred million dollars. As one top state official told me today, that's a hell of an expensive hangover. For Channel 8 News on the Move in Arlington, I'm Jay Lewis. I know how proclaims the button Mrs. Davidson wears on her blouse. In this case, how stands for happiness of womanhood, and Mrs. Davidson says that's what she knows. Her news conference was held in the executive room of the Fairmont, which would seem to smack of equal rights. But the president of Howe assures reporters she is opposed to equality with men, that she likes her position on a pedestal, and that she wants to be a sex object. Despite interruptions from a woman's lib-oriented female reporter, Mrs. Davidson told me what she considers the ideal female situation. I feel that the ideal role and the role in which a woman finds the most uh, joy and happiness is in being a wife, a mother, and a homemaker. Uh, we have a tragic situation in America, and that is that so many women have to work. I mean have to work. And they're standing up and saying, I like it. Yes, I like it. Because darn it, we got our pride, you know? We're not gonna stand up and say, well, I'm working because my husband can't make ends meet, or I'm working to buy shoes for the kids. We don't say that. We say we like it. But I think it is a tragic thing that so many wives and mothers do have to work. And if our Congress could do something for us, I think it would be great if they could make it possible for more women to stay at home and be wives and mothers like they would like to. But you don't object to equal opportunity for work if a woman wants right. to work. If she wants to, and as long as it doesn't, uh, her family should come first. Yeah, you know, we're, we're not going to let down. You know, we got to keep going. Uh, I think we will. We've got... Everybody will be back. Uh, we've got the same feeling, so uh, we ought to be able to do it. Mel, it was just a, a fantastic job, it appeared, of uh, preparation going into the game. You knew what they were going to do just uh, at every juncture. Well, we were determined, and uh, you got to give credit to Coach Landry for uh, getting us there. You know, he uh, he's the leader, really. You know, he uh, put in the offense and the defense. Uh, he scouted them. Uh, he knew what they were going to do, and he, he made sure that we knew so we were prepared and uh, determined, and we went out and got the job done. Was there, <coughs> excuse me, was there in the preparation anything different from a year ago? Was the, was the feeling on the team going up to the game different at all? Well, last year, uh, we were confident. You know, we were kind of a Cinderella team. Right. But we were confident, and uh, we were ready to play. But, you know, a lot of funny things happened in that game. I still think we should have won it. But uh, this year, uh, the feeling was uh, more or less about the same, but it was just that determination that this had to be it. You know, uh, there was no tomorrow. This had to be it, and uh, everybody just, just did a great job. But, you know, we'll think, of, we'll think about it for a few more weeks, and, you know, just, you know, it's so exciting, you know. It's <laughs> I don't know what to say, really. <laughs> you got the giggles almost. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid I do. <laughs> Was it, was it when you had won? Uh, did you feel, what did you think you would feel like and did it match that? Well, uh, I knew we would be very happy and uh, uh, I knew that the people in Dallas, you know, would be very happy and uh, we have a lot of fans uh, all across the country. And it meant so much, you know, because people said we could win the big game and we couldn't go out there and, you know, play physical uh, football and they hit us hard, you know, the Cowboys full, but we play good sound football, we made very few mistakes and you know, we execute and we out here and we out for nesting, you know, not only Miami, but teams all through the playoffs and teams all through the season. So everything we that we've done uh, this year, uh, you know, we did all sorts of ways. So we feel good about that.
group needs 46,500 voter signatures to call a general election on the Fair Housing Ordinance. They must present those signatures to the city secretary no later than January 31st. Barbara Martin is the president of the Ladies' Society. Barbara, what is the biggest problem that you face so far? Well, we have found, Gary, that uh, a large number of the people do not understand this ordinance. Uh, we felt all along that uh, they had not been given enough information before the ordinance was passed, and we feel even uh, more definitely now that they don't understand what it's all about. Uh, we have explained that uh, we have a federal law that covers the same things, uh, although the, the local open, open housing ordinance uh, is almost open in, it uh, has very few limits on uh, uh, what uh, our administrator can go into concerning uh, the, lo the open housing. The Ladies Society for the Preservation of Dallas County is about half through and they've already used up 50 of the 60 days they were allotted. Their one major hope now seems to lie in the fact that there are a large number of petitions that have been mailed out but have not been returned. Now this group says they'll hope with all hope until midnight a week from Monday. Jerry Park, Channel 8 News on the move. The only solution to it is a reversal by the United States Supreme Court am I correct in this as so uh, and uh, short of that we're bound by their decision I'm under injunction as is every one of the other 254 county chairmen in Texas so as you see it right this minute you're in bad financial trouble oh no 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 not bad um, <clears throat> we could be in better uh, financial straits but uh, really uh, we can hold a primary if we have to no. Mm -hmm.